Number Theoretic Functions, Part 1 The Tau and Sigma Function Welcome to this 7-part series on the concept of number theoretic functions that aims to give a complete understanding of the theory and proofs associated with this branch of number theory. We will discuss, over this 7-part series, various topics ranging from the sum of divisors function sigma to the greatest integer function and its applications in enumerating the greatest exponent of a prime which divides n factorial. We will also touch upon the topic of multiplicative functions and give a variety of results concerning them along with their proofs. In this part, we discuss the tau and sigma function. We start by defining what a number theoretic function is. Generally speaking, its domain of definition is the set of positive integers. Its output can be a positive integer, a negative integer, or even a real number depending upon the circumstance. Now we turn our attention to two specific examples of number theoretic functions just as we promised. These are tau of n and sigma of n. The first counts the number of positive divisors of an integer n. The second evaluates the sum of the same set of positive divisors of the number n. With the aim of generating formulae for tau of n and sigma of n, we lay down a preliminary theorem regarding the form of the divisor of an integer. First, let us assume that the prime factorization of n greater than 1 in canonical form is p1 to the k1, p2 to the k2, and so on, all the way up to pr to the kr. The theorem states that a positive integer d is a divisor of n if and only if d takes the form p1 to the a1, p2 to the a2, and so on, all the way up to pr to the ar, where each ai is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to ki, for all i greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to r. Proving it is a simple exercise. If d divides n, then we can write that d d prime equals n for some integer d prime. Now dealing with the trivial cases of d equals 1 and d equals n, we see that d does indeed take on the required form of p1 to the a1, p2 to the a2, and so on, all the way up to pr to the ar. When d equals 1, we just have that all the ai's are 0. When d equals n, each ai equals ki for all the i's. In non-trivial cases, d is greater than 1 and d prime is also greater than 1. Hence, both d and d prime will be divisible by at least one prime each. Say d equals q1, q2, q3 all the way up to qs, where each of the qi's are not necessarily distinct. Similarly, d prime can be written as the product of primes. d prime equals t1, t2 all the way up to tu, where the tj's are not necessarily distinct. Then n equals q1, q2, q3 all the way up to qs, multiplied by t1, t2 all the way up to tu, Again, by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, the representation of n with primes is unique, so that each qi is equal to some prime pj present in the canonical factorization of n. Thus, grouping like primes in the factorization of d, we have that d equals p1 to the a1, p2 to the a2, and so on, all the way up to pr to the ar, where some ai are allowed to be zero. Each ai cannot exceed ki, since once again the factorization is unique, and ai greater than ki would mean that there are more factors of pi in d d prime than there are in n. For the reverse, we see that if d takes the form p1 to the a1, p2 to the a2, and so on, all the way up to pr to the ar, with ai greater than or equal to 0 and lesser than or equal to ki, then it must be the case that d divides n. This is since we can write n equals p1 to the a1, p2 to the a2, and so on, all the way up to pr to the ar, multiplied by p1 to the k1 minus a1, p2 to the k2 minus a2, and so on, all the way up to pr to the kr minus ar, where each ki minus ai is greater than or equal to 0, and so we can let d prime equal p1 to the k1 minus a1, p2 to the k2 minus a2, and so on, all the way up to pr to the kr minus ar, so that d d prime equals n. Notice also that d prime is greater than 0. With this prerequisite complete, we can now venture to set up formulae for tau of n and sigma of n. We notice that if n equals 1, tau of 1 equals 1, and sigma of 1 equals 1. If n is greater than 1, and n equals p1 to the k1, p2 to the k2, all the way up to pr to the kr, then tau of n equals k1 plus 1 multiplied by k2 plus 1 all the way up to kr plus 1. This is since for each divisor d equals p1 to the a1, p2 to the a2 all the way up to pr to the ar, there are ki plus 1 choices for the exponent ai which are any one of the values between 0 and ki. As these choices can be made simultaneously 
we have to multiply them out. Now for sigma of n, I call your attention to the product 1 plus p1 plus p1 squared all the way up to p1 to the k1 multiplied by 1 plus p2 plus p2 squared all the way up to p2 to the k2 and so on up till 1 plus pr plus pr squared all the way up to pr to the kr which is an exact factorization of the sum of the positive divisors of n. This is evident by the fact that each divisor appears once and only once in the expansion of the product into a sum. For d equals p1 to the a1, p2 to the a2 and so on all the way up to pr to the ar, we select the factor p1 to the a1 from the first parentheses, p2 to the a2 from the second and finally pr to the ar from the last. In addition, selecting one term from each parentheses and then multiplying them out yields one unique divisor of n. But the terms in each parentheses constitute a geometric series. We notice that pi minus 1 multiplied by 1 plus pi plus pi squared all the way up to pi to the ki equals pi to the ki plus 1 minus 1. When these geometric series equals pi to the ki plus 1 minus 1 upon pi minus 1. The value of sigma of n is simply the product of this fraction for all the values of i. The last thing we consider before concluding part 1 of this series on number theoretic functions is the product of the divisors of a number. We see that the divisor equation takes the following form n equals d d prime for every divisor d of n. Now as we allow d to run through all the divisors, we construct tau of n equalities for n. It is also seen that as d runs through the divisors of n, then so does d prime. In fact, d prime equals n upon d and the product of d over the divisors of n equals the product of n upon d over the divisors of n. Therefore, the product of d d prime over the divisors of n equals the product of d over the divisors of n squared. Hence, we boil it down to n raised to the power tau of n equals the product of d over the divisors of n squared, ultimately leading to an interesting formula for the product of divisors for given integer n. It is the product of d over the divisors of n equals n raised to the power tau of n upon 2. With this, part 1 ends. The link to part 2 is in the description. Over there, we introduce the concept of a multiplicative function and show that sigma and tau are multiplicative. Thank you. Before I end, let me also mention that all the credit for the theory and the proofs goes to David M. Burton, who is the author of the book Elementary Number Theory. Credit is also given to McGraw-Hill Education India Private Limited, who have published the Indian edition.